Welcome, everyone. I know that we all just got situated, but I want to take you out of iHouse for a moment to a land far, far away, a distant, remote wilderness where you, an adventurous Californian, may find yourself one day on an extravagant vacation when you can afford it. The place that I'm talking about, of course, is Tilden Park. <laughs> Now, while you're hiking just a mile away from here in Tilden Park, you need to be very aware of the many perils that you may encounter, including mountain lions. But don't worry, because the UC Berkeley Police Department will have warned you about mountain lions way ahead of time. <laughs> the real peril that I'm talking about, the danger that can come from above, from below, from the trees themselves, that's right, I'm talking about ticks. <laughs> Now, let me just remind you what ticks are. <laughs> ticks are disgusting. <laughs> horrible, blood-sucking, vampiric nightmares, and I've put this image up here to haunt your dreams for the next month. <laughs> so ticks can be very small, they can fit on the tip of a pen, as you can see here on the right, but after feeding on an animal, or even you, for weeks or even months at a time, they can become engorged on your blood, which is what you're looking at here on the left. Now this is bad news, because the entire time that ticks are feeding on you, they can be pumping deadly pathogens straight into your bloodstream. Now, you might have heard of some tick-borne diseases, such as Lyme disease, but the pathogen that's very close to my heart, figuratively, not literally, thank God, <laughs> and what I'm going to be telling you about today is rickettsia. Now, if you get bit by a tick and get rickettsia, you can get a lesion at the site of an infection, which you can see here. You can also get spots up and down your body and develop diseases such as Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, You can have a very high fever, and this can even be fatal if you're not treated quickly by a doctor. So I want to also give you guys a scale for what we're going to be talking about here today. So rickettsia are very, very small. <laughs> Do you think you can see rickettsia with just your eyes? The answer is no. In fact, all you can see with your eyes is the human form. So here's the rock. Why the rock? Because we can all agree he's very nice to look at. If you ever have the opportunity to zoom in on the rock's bicep, <laughs> then you would see, with a 10x magnification microscope, you'd be able to see the individual cells that make up his arm. So here you can see about one or 200 cells that are growing together. But this still isn't enough to see rickettsia. So we need an even more powerful microscope, like some of the ones that we have here at Cal that are very fancy and expensive. And what we need to do now to be able to, to see what are your cells and what are the bacteria is label them with fluorescent probes. So for my, my talk today, all of our cells are going to be labeled in green. And all these evil, disgusting, you know where this is going, rickettsia are labeled in Stanford colored red. Well, this brings me to the question that I'm interested in, I hope to get you interested in today, which is, how does your immune system kill rickettsia? So, the good news is that your immune system can kill some, some rickettsia. We're going to illustrate this out here today in human form. <laughs> so... The evil rickettsia are labeled in Stanford colored red, and these good guys the immune proteins are labeled in golden bear colored yellow. <laughs> and what you can see is that these immune proteins found in your cell can target and go to the outside of these bacteria and kill them. So this is like what's happening here. <laughs> this bacteria is now dead. <laughs> wow, you're really going to go crazy at this next part. Uh, <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, do you really think that these rickettsia are going to give up so easily? Will they surrender? That's right. These bacteria have learned how to break dance. What you're... Give it up. What you're looking at is a video of rickettsia that have learned to take your own host cell proteins and then use them 
to, to rocket themselves around the cell. Now this is bad news because as soon as one bacteria gets in and starts to replicate, another bacteria will start to also grow. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, that the immune protein has no chance. Your immune system cannot stop these dancing bacteria. As soon as you have two bacteria dancing, uh-oh, you might get three. This brings me to a new question. How can we kill these dancing bacteria? So, we have three different projects that we're working on in the lab in regards to how we can kill these bacteria. First of all, we can kill them directly by treating them with antibiotics. So this is kind of like cheating. This is instead of having an immune protein, now you have a sword. You can see that these antibiotics pop the bacteria, they explode, and now they're dead. Sorry, rickettsia number one. <laughs> and this is actually good because if you get infected with rickettsia and you go to the doctor, you'll get treated with antibiotics and it will hopefully work. Of course, we know that bacterial pathogens are developing antibiotic resistance. So we need to come up with new different ways to treat them. In addition, if you got diagnosed incorrectly and treated with the wrong antibiotic, the bacteria could still survive. So, an additional way that we've learned to kill these bacteria is by starving them. So this is like as if I'm just up here just trying to live my normal rickettsia life, doing the things I like to do, and I need to stop and take a drink. We've discovered this compound called butionine sulfoxamine that depletes the cells of an essential nutrient that the bacteria need to survive and grow. So now I'm dead. The last way that we can kill these bacteria that I'm working on is by treating them with a protein that's naturally, <laughs> naturally found in your immune system, and this upregulates these, these immune proteins. So now instead of just having a couple, we have many more. So you can see that when we use this protein, type one interferon, we can now kill these bacteria. Sorry, number two. I'll just wrap up and say that we might not be able to beat these guys on the dance floor, and I want to see somebody try if you think you can, uh, but we can probably outsmart them in the lab. And also, you should all be very afraid of ticks, but rest assured that here at Cal, we're developing new ways to treat these diseases. So I'll finish up and say thanks to uh, my lab, as well as everybody up here helping out today. And if you want to learn more about rickettsia or innate immunity or science jokes, you can follow me on Twitter. And, uh, Thank you for your attention. Give it up. Give it up for Thomas and his crew. Great job. Thank you so much.